Okay, so for today we're going to discuss Newton's three laws of motion. Here on the left, you can see a picture of Isaac Newton. Before we get into the laws of motion, I kind of want to discuss just about what he's really done for the world and what he's done for like the math community and science community. Um, first off, he was invented calculus, which I know that we all love and enjoy today. He came up with the idea that light is composed of rainbow colors. So all of the colors that you see are because light is reflecting off of them. And that um, that's the reason why you see all these different colors. He created the first reflecting telescope, which um, contributed a lot to the astronomy community. The laws of motion, which we're going to discuss today, and the theory of gravitation. So for the first law, which can also is known as the law of inertia, states that an object at rest tends to stay at rest, and an object in motion tends to stay in motion unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. So first we're going to look at balanced forces. When you have 100 newtons on this side and 100 newtons on this side, you're going to have an, a balanced force. So equal forces in opposite directions produce no motion. So you can see here that the truck um, is standing still, and that's because it has balanced forces acting upon it. For unbalanced force, on this side we have a smaller force of 60 newtons and a bigger force of 100 newtons. So unequal opposing forces produce an unbalanced force which causes motion. So if you have the bigger force on this side, it's going to propel the truck um, to the right. So the truck is in motion with um, unbalanced forces. So if objects in motion tend to stay in motion, why don't moving objects keep moving forever? Um, things don't keep moving forever because there's all, almost always an unbalanced force acting upon them. Whether it's friction or gravity, there's just always something there to, un, to make that force unbalanced. So for an example, when you're sliding a book across a table, it's going to slow down and stop. That's caused by the force of friction. Or whenever you're throwing a ball upwards, it's going to eventually slow down and fall, and that's due to the force of gravity. So if you are in space and you had a ball and you threw it up, it's going to continue to move upwards, and that's because there's no gravity in space. But since we're here on Earth, it's going to slow down, come to a point where it stops for a split second, and it's going to fall back down, and that's due to gravity. So in, for the law of inertia, we have mass. Um, mass is, measure, is the measure of the amount of matter in an object. A lot of time, um, it's measured in kilograms. So you'll see um, kg, and you'll, you can just know that that means that it's kilograms. The law of inertia, um, what exactly is inertia? So inertia can be described as a property of an object that describes how much it will resist change to the motion of the object. So basically it's how much it will resist change. So if you have more mass, then it's, you're going to have more inertia. So what is this unbalanced force that acts on an object in motion? That can be named friction. There are four main types of friction. You have sliding friction, which can, um, for an example, in ice skating, when your skates are sliding across the ice, um, that causes a type of friction. You have rolling friction, which when you go bowling and you roll the ball down the alley, um, the ball rolling on the ground is also creating a type of friction. <coughs> Excuse me. You have fluid friction which can be either air or liquid. Um, it's basically when air or water re is resistant. And then you have static friction, which is the initial friction um, when an object is moving. So when you're rolling your hands together to keep warm, um, between your hands there's going to be friction. So just there's many types of friction. So let's look at a, go a golf ball for an example. When you hit the golf ball off the tee, it's going to fly in the air. So unless acted on by an unbalanced force, 
it would never stop. But since you have gravity and you have air, that's going to act as fluid friction and it's eventually going to stop and you know fall to the ground. Okay, so now we're going to look at Newton's second law of motion. It can be described as a f um, force equals mass times acceleration. Um, or in a formula form, it's going to be F equals M times A. So force is equal to mass times acceleration. Um, the force is measured in newtons. It's important to know that the acceleration of gravity on Earth is um, equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. And you can also look, as, um, look at as a force um, as weight. So weight is a type of force, and it's equal to mass times gravity, which would be the gravity on Earth. So let's look at this quick question. So a moon's gravity is one-sixth of the Earth. If you weigh 420 newtons on Earth, what will you weigh on the moon? So if you said 70 newtons, you're correct. So basically you would just take 420 and divide it by 6, and that would give you 70 newtons. Okay, so weight is the measure of the force of gravity on the mass of an object. Um, a lot of times people interchange weight and mass. Um, and I mean, I'm even guilty of that. But weight is should be remembered as a force and not necess and it can't be remembered as a number, but it should be looked at as a force and then mass as uh, mostly in numbers, like how much mass something has. Um, so now, like right now, we're going to think of weight as an initial force. Um, and then weight is measured in newtons. Okay, so let's look at this problem. One rock weighs 5 newtons, and the other rock weighs 0 0.5 newtons. How much more force will be required to accelerate the first rock at the same rate as the second rock? So you're trying to get them equal. And if you want to do that, you'd have to um, multiply 0 0.5 times 10 to get it to 5 newtons. That way they're equal and they're going to accelerate at the same rate. Okay, so moving on to Newton's third law. Um, it states for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So let's say, let's whatever surface that you have right now, just push down on it. So I'm at a desk and I'm going to push down on my desk. So that's one action. The reaction is going to be the desk pushing back on me. Um, I know it's kind of hard to think of it that way because, you know, a desk is an object and objects don't usually push back. Um, but you, it's, it's, you can think of it that way. So when you push on the desk, there is a reaction and that's going to be the desk pushing back on you. So, for an example, when you're standing on a skateboard or on a slippery floor and you push against a wall, you slide into the opposite direction, which would be away from the wall. And um, this is because when you push on the wall, the wall pushes back with an equal and opposite force. And we've all stubbed our toe. If you haven't, lucky for you. Um, so when your toe exerts a force on a rock or more commonly, the corner of the bed or corner of the end table or any corner in your house, really. Um, it exert the Whatever you step your toe on exerts an equal force back on your toe. So the harder you hit your toe against an object, the more force it exerts back on your toe and the more pain that you're going to feel. Alright, so for an example, a bug with a mass of 5 grams flies into the windshield of a moving 1,000 kilogram bus. Which will have the same, the most force? Is it going to be the bug on the bus or the bus on the bug? Right. If you said the force would be the same, you're correct. And that's because the force of the bug would be mass times the acceleration. And the force of the bus is also going to be mass times acceleration. So they're going to be equal because you still have the same formula. It's just the numbers are going to be switched, but Either way, the, when you multiply it, you're going to come up with the same answer. Right. So another example we can look at is when a rocket is flying to the moon. So you have 
the action, which is going to be the rocket that pushes on the gases, and the reaction is going to be the gases that push on the rocket. So because of this, it'll propel the rocket into the atmosphere and then eventually into space. All right, so we have a little problem here. So consider hitting a baseball with a bat. If we call the force applied to the ball by the bat the action force, identify the reaction force. All right, so the action force is the ball, the force applied to the ball by the bat. So would the reaction force be the force applied to the bat by the hands, the force applied to the bat by the ball, the force the ball carries with it in flight, or would it be the centrifugal force in the swing? All right, if you said the force applied to the bat by the ball, then you're correct. Um, so the action force would be the force applied to the ball by the bat, and the reaction force would be the force applied to the bat by the ball. All right, so I always like this scenario just because it's interesting and different, and you don't really think about these kind of concepts happening. Um, but suppose you're taking a spacewalk near the space shuttle, and your safety line breaks. How would you get back to the shuttle? All right, so the thing you would do would be to take one of the tools from your tool belt and throw it as hard as you can directly away from the shuttle. Then, with the help of Newton's second and third law, you will accelerate back towards the shuttle. Um, as you throw the tool, you push against it, causing it to accelerate. But at the same time, by Newton's third law, the tool is pushing back against you um, in the opposite direction. And this causes you to accelerate back towards the shuttle. So you throw the tool, and at the same time, you're applying a force. But then it's also giving a force back, which makes you move back towards the shuttle. Because no one wants to be lost in space. All right, so let's just do a quick little review. So Newton's first law is stated as objects in motion tend to stay in motion, and objects that rest tend to stay at rest unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. Newton's second law is force equals mass times acceleration, or in formula form, F equals M times A. And then for the third law, it's going to be for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Right. And just for fun, let's look at Newton's three laws from Homer Simpson's perspective. So Homer Simpson, um, he's large and has a greater mass, therefore he has greater inertia. So friction and gravity oppose his motion. So it's going to be harder for him to change directions or stop or you know anything that has to do with motion since he has a larger mass. Um, for the second law, Homer's mass is multiplied by 9.8 meters per second squared, and this is going to equal his weight. And remember, weight is considered a force. And for his third law, when Homer pushes against the ground or when he falls or anything that, ha that has him come into contact with some other object, um, it's gonna, the object's going to push back on him. So it's going to be an equal... Or an, equal and opposite action. Alright, and those are the three laws, and I hope you enjoyed the lesson.